Hi, I'm Craig Everett, Aggregate and Asphalt Support Technologist at Tarmac, and I'm here to talk to you about Asphalt Mixed Designs. In this section, I'll be covering why we design asphalt, what properties we look for in asphalt, and how we measure them. So why do we need to design asphalt? Well, essentially, to ensure the mixture is suitable for the application it is to, use, to be used for, and to ensure the asphalt meets any specification requirements that are stipulated in the contract. Asphalt can be supplied using a recipe approach, but this may not be suitable for all aggregate types and more challenging applications such as very heavily trafficked roads and high stress areas require a design approach. Hot rolled asphalt is designed to optimise the binder content that is unique to the source of the sand being used. Properties we look for in asphalt include initial volumetrics, the start point to determine the correct aggregate grading and binder content to deliver optimal performance. This becomes your target composition. Air voids are usually a good indicator of mixed properties. Too high will allow ingress of water and too low can result in an unstable mix. Most design processes have a requirement of a minimum and or a maximum void content. And binder content. This is optimised to the aggregate type and grading of the mix. Some specifications have a requirement, which is usually a minimum. Performance testing. Testing is carried out at the target composition derived from the initial volumetric testing. We want our mix to be resistant to deformation so that it will not rot under heavy traffic. We want it to be durable so it will resist long-term damage from exposure to water and last a long time. Stiffness. We want our structural layers to have the load spreading ability to withstand heavy loading. And crack resistant. Is it flexible enough to absorb any movement in the pavement? Air voids are the gaps in the mixture not filled by aggregate or bitumen. They are a good indicator of how a mix will perform. We can calculate the void content of asphalt using the bulk density and the maximum density of the mix. Bulk density is usually carried out on lab compacted specimens, but can be done using cores taken from lay material. The specimen is weighed in air and water to determine its volume, which in turn is used to calculate its density. Maximum density is carried out on uncompacted, loose material broken down as much as possible. It's the density of the mixture without any air voids present, hence the term maximum density. The two main laboratory compaction methods are Marshall Hammer, traditionally used for hot rolled asphalt and SMA mix design, and gyratory compaction, generally specific to EME2 mixes. Aggregates are combined in proportions to meet the target grading, preheated and then mixed with the correct amount of bitumen under lab control conditions. The mixture is then placed into a cylindrical metal mould and compacted to a given number of blows per side or a number of gyrations. The specimens are then allowed to cool, demolded, and then used to determine bulk density. We can manage a mixture's resistance to deform using the aggregate grading and binder content and type or grade of binder used. The susceptibility of a mixture to deform under load is assessed using the wheel tracking test. This entails subjecting the asphalt to repeated passes of a loaded wheel at a constant elevated temperature and then recording the degree of rutting that has occurred. Different devices are used for different mixtures with typical testing temperatures of 60 degrees. Hot rolled asphalt is given a thousand cycles in a small size device and SMA 10,000 cycles, whereas a mix like EME2 is given 30,000 cycles in a large device. Exposure to water provides a challenge to the durability of asphalt. We manage this by ensuring there is enough bitumen in the mix relating to the target grading. Additives can be introduced to help improve adhesion. A mixture's ability to resist water damage is measured using the ITSR test, which involves subjecting compacted specimens to soaking in water and subsequently testing alongside a dry set of specimens. The indirect tensile strength of each specimen is recorded and the ratio of the wet sand to the dry set is expressed as a percentage. 
specifications typically call for a minimum retain strength of 70 to 80 percent. The stiffness of a mix is measured using the indirect tensile stiffness modulus test or ITSM. Tests are carried out on compacted specimens at controlled loading rates and are used to rack bituminous materials as a guide to relative performance in the pavement. This can also be used to estimate the structural behaviour in the road. Resistance to cracking. Well, not all cracking is the same. The stresses and strains in asphalt is part of an overlay on jointed concrete are very different to the stresses and strains in asphalt on a motorway. So we use different test methods to measure these different aspects of cracking. For local authority engineers, the mo more important is almost definitely what you might refer to as big cracking but I'll also spend some time explaining small cracking. Big cracking happens under big strains, i.e. a thin asphalt overlay above a joint in a concrete pavement. The movements here are large, which is what the semicircular bending test is meant to replicate. Smaller cracking is fatigue cracking, resulting from millions of repetitive deflections of the pavement as heavy goods vehicles pass over. Classic pavement design theory says that over time, this creates a crack at the bottom of the pavement that leads to progressive failure of the pavement. The semicircular bending test. This is a test that measures the fracture toughness of an asphalt mixture for the assessment of the potential for crack propagation. It's principally for local authority roads, which are thinner and subject to more movement due to variable foundations. A half cylinder test piece has a small cut made into its flat side to initiate a crack into the specimen. This ensures that when a load is applied, the crack appears in a controlled manner. The specimen is then subjected to a controlled rate of deformation in a three-point bending configuration. A load is applied to achieve a deformation of the specimen of five millimeters per minute, and the test is generally carried out at zero degrees centigrade. Fatigue test. The resistance to fatigue of a mix is measured using alternative tests, including bending tests and direct and indirect tensile tests. Specimens can be prismatic, trapezoidal or cylindrical in shape and are laboratory prepared to very tight tolerances. Tests are carried out on compacted specimens at controlled loading rates and are used to run bituminous mixtures as a guide to relative performance in the pavement. Different test temperatures and loading frequencies can be selected. Here at Tarma, we use the four point bending test, where precision cut beams of asphalt are subjected to repeated loads at a given frequency under a range of stresses, applied until the mixture loses half of its initial stiffness. The result is usually the stress required for this to occur at a million load cycles. But there are different ways of reporting the result. Thank you for listening and I hope you have enjoyed this brief look at Ashford Mix Design. Goodbye.